Hi guys, welcome back to my Alien Romulus review. This time we are doing the spoiler review and we have a lot to talk about because there's a lot to digest here because this is a, a very, very cool movie that uh, swerved me in some ways that I did not expect and there's a lot I love about it. So let's go ahead and talk about, uh, first off, obviously the elephant in the room or whatever the heck the human morph is. That thing was terrifying. I alluded to a scene in the previous uh, video talking about how there was a scene that actually unnerved me and it's probably going to give me nightmares. Uh, there is a a <laughs> a mix of a human and a xenomorph, something similar to what happened in Alien Resurrection, but even more messed up. So the the the, the plot MacGuffin Black Goo from the Alien Prometheus and Alien Covenant uh, series comes back, makes a return. So um, you know that's good because we're keeping continuity in the series. Uh, but the Black Goo now is kind of being portrayed as Waylon Yutani's big way to improve on humanity. Because if you know we're overworking people and they're dying, um, clearly the answer is not hey let's actually like start treating them better it's hey let's just like evolve humanity itself so we can overwork them which is a very big like evil corporate thing that fits Wayland yutani and gives them a solid motivation that isn't just oh it's for the weapons division which is kind of what it's previously been before can they still use it for that absolutely but that that motivation they introduced in this movie fits a lot well um but the black goo uh the the character i think her name's k or kate um <laughs> late in the movie is dying so she you know as a last ditch effort decides to uh inject herself with some of the black goo and uh she was uh pergantan ant uh pergante at the time and uh it makes this really terrifying human morph that gives massive uncanny valley vibes if you're one of those people that can't do uncanny valley tldr things that look human but aren't like you will not be able to do this movie because <laughs> that thing made me uncomfortable and i have no issues with that there is one like it's like a scene that only lasts like three seconds it's like the first reveal of this thing after it's like you know it's born where it's like down a hallway like lurch down and it's like the most just like uncomfortable thing you could ever look at like it, once they start showing off a bit more you realize it's not like nearly as bad but like when it's just down that hallway and you can barely see it and it, it's whew. i i doubt you know we go to alien movies to see alien monsters <laughs> but like you know the, the z-morph as as iconic as it is is a little overexposed like we've been watching this thing since 1979 <laughs> you know so it doesn't really like it's cool but we're not really scared of it anymore but that thing the human morph that thing scares me <laughs> i don't want to be around that thing it is uncomfortable i think that's the best way i can describe it, it is uncomfortable um also speaking of that uh probably the most violent an uncomfortable birth scene in any alien movie ever like even like st like kind of like the 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 what are the what is the word the the standouts like pred alien and avpr and um the backburster from covenant was pretty gnarly but like this one takes the cake this one i like i i was in the theater actually going eh, eh. <laughs> i was i was i was it was uncomfortable to watch it was so uncomfortable to watch and um, I feel like it's because like most of Alien up until this point has been, you know, there's there's subtext of like birth cycle and that sort of thing. Like that's that's something that's always been part of the franchise. But it kind of just ripped the bandit off and said, yep, let's just do that. But like really terrifying. <laughs> let's do that because I'm really terrifying now. Uh, and it worked and it served for a very, very shocking and uh, terrifying final act. Um, yeah, it was wild. If you if you don't watch this movie for any other reason than to see the final act, you watch it to see the final act because it is, oh man, it is wild. Um, speaking of the final act, uh, this is where I feel that uh, Rain finally comes into her form as a protagonist uh, because like up until that point, like we all care about Andy. Andy is a, is like the sweetheart character uh, that you want to succeed. You want them to get out of their bad situation because they're a little naive and they're the circumstances they are suffering under are not really their fault and they're just sweet <laughs> as can be. So you want them to succeed. Uh, but rain kind of mostly up until that point serves as just kind of like a vehicle for the audience to like experience that feeling of wanting to protect andy even though andy's trying to protect her um and that's really cool and that really works but like the final act is when she really like you know puts the boots on and really shows like hey no i'm the protagonist here because her determination to take that thing down i, I don't know if i can do that <laughs> i look at that thing and i'd be like mm, i'm good goodbye um but she goes and fights it 
And even when things start going wrong, she continues to fight it. And like, she's very, very determined. Now, this might be me going out on a limb here, but like, Rain really gives me like Jill Valentine vibes from the Resident Evil universe because Jill in Resident Evil 1 starts off very like green and kind of scared of everything that's happening to her. But by Resident Evil 3, she even though she's being chased by Nemesis, she, you know, takes it back to him. And I feel like that's kind of the transformation we see from the start of the film with Rain to the end. And obviously, Jill Valentine's a great character, so that's cool. Yeah, Rain and Andy really are the powerhouse characters of this film. Those are the ones that you care about the most, especially Andy. Andy, you're going to feel <laughs> very, very sympathetic for uh, because he was... He was he's a de decommissioned android that Rain's dad just kind of fixed up and basically made to be a lifelong protector of Rain. Um, but because that uh, Andy was defective and he has a lot of issues like doing just about anything. And it seems like a lot of the time Rain has to protect Andy just as much as Andy has to protect Rain. Um, but because Andy's trying so hard and has a good like a good heart, despite not even being technically human, like you root for them the whole time. Um, unfortunately, like I said in the spoiler free review, I, I don't care about the rest of the cast, like literally at all. I could not keep two and two together on who's dating, who, whose relationship with who, whose brother, sister to who like Tyler is the is the is the leader. He's the guy who you know made this all happen. And that's about it. Everybody else. I'm like, um, so. Bjorn dating Navarro and Kate K I don't her name is pregnant by somebody in the crew no not in the crew she someone else that off screen just some random person like there, I was just like but then she said like my brother and I'm like who wait who's the brother <laughs> like, I was like there's a lie I was like who's right doing what's happening and um there wasn't really a lot about them that really stuck out for me to be able to remember them. Um, even characters like Bjorn that got a little bit more of a backstory of like hating androids because uh, a synthetic made a, a calculated decision over an empathetic decision. Um, like even then, I'm just like, oh, OK, well. OK, I, I don't care what happens to you. And yeah, it's like because they wrote two characters really strongly the rest kind of just like blend into the background and since those are the characters that are going to be dying um and you theoretically should care about the characters that are dying that's kind of kind of a problem kind of an issue um like i said also in the spoiler free review uh the cast is fairly young uh so while that does frame the fact that their bad decisions make sense because they're they're very, very young, so they, they don't have the wisest decision making. Not a lot of years under their belt yet. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those things that, like, because they're young at the same time, it's very clear that they're going to bite it, and they absolutely do. But because I didn't care about them either, it was just kind of like, like, I had no suspense that they were going to die because I'm like, well, they're young and stupid, so they're probably going to die. But I also don't care if they die because they're they're not very fleshed out. So <laughs> it's just it's just sad. Now we're, I want to talk about the, the, the callbacks to the previous series because uh, there's a lot of returning characters, which is like, how do you do that in an alien franchise film? But you did. Um, Ash is back from the first movie, but he's not technically Ash. He's just the same model. Another character called Rook. Um, I always wondered why they made Ash specifically for the mission in Alien 1 and just like didn't make any more of his model. It's like it's one of those things that like, you know, with how Wayland yutani is like a, a greedy corporate structure, you feel like they wouldn't like do something that like specifically tailored and meticulous and it turns out they didn't they, <laughs> they just made a lot of these science officer uh androids to specifically mess things up so yeah that adds a little bit of uh to the lore but that is actually not my favorite returning character my favorite returning character is actually big chap himself the alien from the first film comes back and messes up everything in romulus um apparently the reason the plot in romulus is happening is because Wayland yutani went out there to collect the xenomorph after the events of alien one from the Nostromo wreckage and homie comes on <laughs> to the romulus station and does that kind of behind the scenes cut uh or deleted scene thing that they did in um alien one messes up the whole ship makes more face huggers <laughs> and just like takes down the whole ship unfortunately uh they are killed off screen and you don't get to see how they bring down the romulus ship that would probably have been awesome to at least get some like security footage of that or something considering that that is like the first alien we ever see ever i do think it's funny though i do think it's funny though hi everybody say hi to will he's an air jail because he was misbehaving um <laughs> i think it's really cool we got him back 
Like it's just it, like it is the iconic Xenomorph, you know. Um, so it's awesome that they <laughs> came back and caused even more havoc after absolutely ruining the entire lives of the entire crew of the Nostromo. They were done there. They had more work to do. I did also love all the film screen explorations of the aliens life cycle. I did think we got uh, it was cool to see that we got a um, in between explanation for what happens after the chest burster comes out before they become an adult xenomorph. Um, it was easy to assume they just kept molting and molting over and over again until they became uh, the big xenomorph. But apparently they go into a cocoon, which is also filled with acid, uh, but also isn't doesn't make them um, invincible because uh, Mr. Douche Tuber Man sticks a cattle prod in there and scorches his head and he ends up keeping that for the rest of the film. Um, so it kind of shows that even in their like ultimate, you know, ultimate weapon, ultimate life form, um, they're still, you know, working out the kinks in their development cycle because <laughs> that the homie got messed up in there. Of course, you know, Bjorn died for doing that. I, that, I think that's his name. He, he died for doing that, but yeah, it, it, it still messed him up permanently. So. Overall, I think it's a great movie and it sets up a lot for a sequel because with, I don't know, it just with a lot of the stuff with Rain kind of fully coming into her position as a protagonist, uh, what's going to happen to Andy? Because Andy, uh, while existing on a chip, his body, his physical body is kind of messed up right now uh, on all intents and purposes dead. <laughs> so she's going to have to figure that out. Um, and everybody, all of her other friends are dead, so I don't know what she's going to do in the second film. I, I I guarantee, I guarantee that this whole trip to her Yavarga 39x9 games planet is not going to work out, and we're going to have to do another fun adventure on them getting detoured from that. This is the Alien Universe. Protagonists don't get to have a happy ending. Something is going to go wrong. And that's, there's nothing we can do about it. So I can't wait to see that. In terms of placement with other Alien films in the franchise, I feel like this is my new third favorite. Sorry, Alien 3 fans. I'm not a pick me like you. I understand that that movie is underwhelming and bleak and not in a good way. Um, I'm going to get a lot of hate comments for that one. Hey, flood the dislikes. I, I, I don't like Alien 3 too much. I think it's okay. It's a beautiful movie. It's got some great soundtrack. But overall, this movie is really awesome and takes my third place slot. Um, if I had to give it a number rating, as you, if you've somehow made it to this one and not the spoiler free review, uh, nine out of 10, especially if you love the alien franchise. If you're somebody who doesn't like alien, typically, uh, there, a lot of the meat and potatoes is in like references to the other movies and the general vibe and aesthetic of the alien franchise. So probably an eight if you're just not generally into the alien movies. But yeah, I feel like the two main protagonists, very memorable, very great. Love them. Would love to see them again in another movie. Um, much of the rest of the cast is forgettable. <laughs> I think that holds things back a bit. But they actually found a way to do something new and scary in an alien film, which is... I feel like the other alien movies that they've made post... Even Aliens has been very, like, wash, rinse, repeat, do things very similar to the first two films and without much deviation. And while this film did do that a lot, it really swerved me in the final act, so... Yeah. Pretty awesome. Pretty lovely. What was your favorite part of Alien Romulus now that you've seen it? Or if you decided that you were just going to spoil it for yourself. <laughs> um, what do you think? What's your favorite part? Let me know down in the comments below. Well, that's going to be it for today's video, friends. We will get back to our regu regularly scheduled Dead by Daylight programming after this. Uh, so, yeah. Hopefully I'll see you in tomorrow's video, friends. But if I do not, I will see you when I see you. Goodbye.